All right, we are back from the break. And uh, the party did manage to uh, fish up some uh, some flow fish. They got a little bit of uh, food added. Um, technically, it wouldn't be added for a few days, but um, it's really neither here nor there because it, it needs to be salted and dried and uh, prepared and everything like that since it can't be cooked. Yeah. Why aren't you taking heat metal, Finn? Not yeah, behind. Finn does have a heat metal spell memorized every day for just such an emergency. <laughs> <clears throat> well, and I mean, heat metal is... I'm not sure if heat metal can actually cook. It can certainly heat things up. Um, like, it can get you hot soup, but it doesn't necessarily cook the food. I, I don't... I, I Like, it doesn't specify that it does that so um, well the heat causes damage doesn't it because it's burning yeah but or... it's not that doesn't necessarily mean that it's high enough to actually cook food did we saw the tea machine no. the tea machine I took that no okay i i thought we could i, I had an idea of just uh, using that uh, considering that thing can explode <laughs> well and right. and that thing took up uh, a large amount of space in in Higamus's now Braxton's uh, cabin was yeah. very loud Bra and only did Braxton, a cup of tea. <laughs> Braxton, bl Braxton blew it up one day trying to make a cup of tea. You just never told him it blew up. <laughs> I'm sure he noticed the next time he tried to make a cup of tea. Wasn't that around the time he left? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Yeah, he decided to leave the group because he couldn't have a cup of tea anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just keep going. All right, That's so, official recon so definitely, candidate. like heat metal can can definitely be used to uh, warm up food, um, and certainly like anything that you got preserved already, <clears throat> mm. uh, fantastic for making a hot meal because um, you can you can make a, a reasonable soup out of already preserved stuff. No yeah. problem, you know it all. Uh, but I don't think so it could, can actually cook the fish. Could well could it could help someone, dry it though. Yeah, could someone that's got cooking skills use the boiling water to make steam to make like a sort of like a pressure cooker type environment? Right, but see that's my, my thing is that I don't I don't think it necessarily gets hot enough for all that. So Right, okay. Like you can scald yourself with uh, hot water from the tap, and that's not necessarily boiling water. You know, somebody somebody should have wrote into to Dragon Magazine back in the day and said, "I must know <laughs> whether I can use boiling water from this spell to cook fish in the Flodgerson." <laughs> it's a failure of the Spelljammer community. Um, we just have to deal with it. I mean, I deal with it just fine. Anyway, um, so that will wrap up uh, week five. Um, you do have a few days after that, but by the end of the week, you'd, you'd have the uh, the fish dried and uh, preserved and uh, ready to be uh, turned into various meals. All right, so week six then begins. Okay. And uh, Braxen, is there anything in particular that you want to do? Uh, not really, not after. He's going to th obviously thank F Patar for whichever god sent him the fish <laughs> and ask him to pass it on, whoever, because <laughs> he doesn't know who the god of fish is. Um, and that's that, you know, just get back to his normal duties. All right. Uh, Solace. Yes. Uh, sorry, sorry, I'm bit late from the break. That's okay. Uh, what This is what we are going to be doing on the week. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, you wanted Braxton to make some mechanical thing for you? Yeah, Braxton uh, so last basically brings uh, Braxton every now and then uh, designs for uh, some parts and asks if Braxton can make them. Okay, well uh, Braxton's got ship carpentry, so he might be able to work on stuff that's not too fine detailed. Uh, they're not that uh, complicated. All right. I mean, well, you can do plenty of fine detail. Part. You just can't like it, it's it's more 
ship specific stuff rather than like making cupboards and yeah mm -hmm. I mean go ahead and make a carpentry check okay <laughs> I hope he's I hope it's his his uh bits I'm using up yeah at this point you're just using up scrap right there we go All right. Success. There you go. So you, you, he made the uh, parts for you, uh, Solus. Mm -hmm. All right, Ocker, you're continuing uh, pre-training for uh, riding uh, area airborne riding. Yeah. Okay. Anything else that you want to work on? Not really. Okay. Uh, Finn. Finn will take Bubba aside and let her know about the prank he pulled. <laughs> just so oh. she's not starving herself thank you for telling me <laughs> and she goes back and has a, f <laughs> a helping of the fish if there's fish yeah it, it would be like mixed in with uh, um, future meals and, and kind of like uh, spread out as much as possible kind of thing she won't tell what? anyone she Where? just casually, casually starts eating the fish anyway. When we have the meal with the, the fish, uh, Braxton will say before we all eat, thank you for the, the gods of space fish that sent us these lovely fish. And uh, and all the crew that managed to catch some. Uh all right. Lemma looks at looks at Braxton and says, "You know, you are getting very close to being a missionary." I mean, the rest of us priests are missionaries for our own faith. Yeah. I mean, right. we just don't push as much as Braxton does. Yeah, right. it's a little bit weird that you're pushing the pushing it so hard. Yeah. Mm. Bra Braxton Braxton says. We're all missionaries. Nope. And I'm not talking to my own god here. I'm talking about the god of fish. Mm. There's lots of gods out there, and they all, they all do things. So then I looks at the uh, Brax and takes a plate and goes to her own room to eat. <laughs> and Laftel? Oh, actually, oh, Leva, what did you want to work on? Sorry, Leva, what did you want to work on? This week? She will continue with the spell research that she started. Right, gotcha. All right, Laftel, sorry. Uh, more jam kissing. I have uh, 12 diamonds left to cut. Yeah, just and roll, then be... roll a oh, uh, yeah, then. 7, seven. 70, 10. We'll handle the actual uh, calculating out of uh, what they are afterwards. Hmm. I can just make a mark of uh, 30 gems on week 6. Okay. So yeah, you're able to uh, carve 30 more uh, or cut 30 more gems uh, this week. Okay. And uh, that will bring uh, week 6 to a close. It is uneventful. Um, the uh, excitement with the flow fish and having some new food definitely makes the uh, uh, crew a little bit uh, happier about um, how things are going. Um, staves off the, uh, the you know, antsiness and the boredom and everything. But uh, that will uh, come back eventually. Then uh, week seven begins. So we go back to uh, Braxen. What are you working on this week? Uh, same thing, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Solus. Uh, Solus, among these experiments, also decides to uh, basically start putting idea of a poetry competition for the crew. Okay. That's open to all all those who wants to participate. All right. 
And do you want to hold Just it this to... week, or do you want to do it like uh, the following? Uh, next week, basically, give everyone who wants to participate ample time to uh, create or practice their recitation. What do people win? Uh, so as a, a, a prize for them. Okay. Solas is going to be the judge. At least one of them. Alright. Ocker. Other than uh, continuing uh, to work on riding, anything else that you want to work on? Not really. Okay. You're not working on Red Null. Oh, I'm doing it too. Wave. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, is at this point, anything that would have happened with uh, with those prisoners has happened. Like, there's yeah, they're not interested. I'm probably gonna stop doing that. I'm just gonna be keeping an eye on them. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I would ask. Um, okay, you not this... them? Sorry, go ahead, Laftal. It's clearly ask... a lost cause. <laughs> I would ask Arker to uh, keep an eye on uh, what's her name, the wizard lady. Yeah. Uh, for when she seems a bit well lethargic, then I'll probably have to start giving her good berries. You know. Okay. All right. Because we're gonna run out of stone at some point. I mean, you have a uh, catapult shot. <laughs> Open wide. Fire. <laughs> Finn. What are you working on this week? Yeah, just tending the plants. Doesn't really have anything else pressing to do. Oh, okay. And uh, Leva continuing to uh, research? Yes. Anything else that you want to uh, work on? Well, she's sort of imagining doing uh, fun battles with the crew, with her staff. <laughs> Are they fun for you or them? Probably for them. <laughs> Yeah, because you are still uh, suffering the uh, the minus five penalty, so yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, if, you want, if you want to have actual uh, quarter stuff to quarter stuff uh, battle, Solas could uh, duel uh, you at some point. No, 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 that would be too unfair. She'd rather battle anyone else who doesn't know how to battle. I mean, Solas <laughs> has got a streak for six level. You're in with a chance. Well, huh? Solus, you were uh, training uh, in uh, Mace, right? Uh, not at the moment. No, not, I know not at the moment. Earlier, weren't you? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't really trained uh, trained weapon. Okay, all right, my mistake then. It was Finn, Finn and uh, Leva. Okay, so I thought you were involved in that too. All right. No, since I don't have a weapon proficiency slot available. All right. Well, you could still pre-train. Yeah. So then when you did have a slot, then yeah. you'd, it would just be automatic. This, this all think. started because we thought you wanted a pre-train. <laughs> and everyone else ended up training instead of you. Well, uh, I, I I have a two levels, uh, two levels on my wizard to get weapon proficiency, and uh, did, I think I had a three levels for my priest. Yeah, that's fine. So. Okay. All right, and Laftal. Continues his menagerie of gem cutting. All right, go ahead and uh, roll your seventy ten. I'm getting worse and worse this week. Yeah. Well, now you like you started with the easy ones, you know. Now you're now you're getting to the uh, harder ones. They, they they take more effort, kind of thing. All right, that is also going to, uh, um, actually it was a couple weeks earlier, but uh, a, another year has uh, been closed out. Aw, we've aged up. Uh. So all of the characters are aging, and this is a real age, not, not magical aging. Ah, my so, real age is now 190. Yeah, there my you go. My in-game age is, uh, <clears throat> wait, where is my in-game age? I remember first keep hundred and twenty three yeah, for labor. Hundred and thirty six for laughter. <laughs> so last uh, real age is thirty. Uh Akar is um... Akar is now Akar is now twenty five and his real age is twenty five. <laughs> That's, That's what made me say. 
You try I, drank a potion, I, I drank a potion of youth. I drank a potion of youth at some point and got myself back to my normal age. Oh, I should have done that. I am not affected by haste, so I don't age whenever that spells cast. Yeah. Braxton's real age is 24, but his physical age is 38. <laughs> and the annoying thing the annoying thing is Lever gave him a potion of youth and then he got like um, dispel magic or something cast on him and it, <laughs> it oh you didn't drink the potion it, no he was saving it and it got it got ruined <laughs> See, that's well, that's what if you save things too for too long yeah, you whenever you get a potion of youth, you gotta drink it right then and there. Otherwise, I know. Uh, yeah. I didn't know it wasn't gonna do something like make Braxton ten years old, younger, and make him into like a fourteen-year-old boy. Well, who cares? I mean, <laughs> I mean, that's better than being old. He just be hasted yeah. a few times until you're an appropriate age, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is always that. Like I said, Salah's real age is thirty, but he is forty-six on the current physical age. <sighs> oh. Brutal. What's the early penalties for half elf? This is my strike for Not, yeah, but it it will take oh, some time. That will take you down to five strength. I actually forgot that the the liver has one twenty five because she forgot to add the uh, I forgot to add her age, hasted age a few times twice. So Finn is twenty seven in. Actual years and thirty-two. Otherwise, it's not too bad. Mm. Well, he hasn't so been around for as many hastings. That's true. Yeah. So I still has almost twenty years for uh, middle age. So next time we have a fight and Lever casts that spell, we can call it the Battle of Hastings. <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Finn definitely you... needs to go find some of those spell, those uh, potion ingredients. <laughs> it was a good joke because nobody gave me a heckle bit. <laughs> that means the entire chat likes likes my joke. You can um, ask something. Yeah, I know they've all grown so hard saying. that they've passed out. One yeah. of the two. Yeah. That's true. Question. Um... For doing uh, item research or like potion research, that requires spellcraft. Yes. Ah, uh, well, something can do potion research. E... Because we had a potion of timelessness that only a. I... <coughs> I, <don't coughs> no, can... I don't even know if he can even do it without spellcraft, even if he knows the recipe. If you have the recipe, uh, then okay. yeah, you can you can create magic items. You just can't research magic items without spellcraft. Yeah. If you know the exact procedures on how to create one, then no, you don't you don't need to spellcraft for that. It's only for the research part. Okay, yeah. so that wraps up. Uh, Week seven. All right, so uh, week eight. Oh, yeah, never mind. Yeah, you did well. No, it was something else. So, uh, Braxton, week eight. Mm hmm. What are Am you working I... on? Uh, I haven't really got anything to work on now. I'm, I'm going to get to the other end and regret not researching anything. Um, um, oh, uh, actually, let's let's do let's do this. Uh, roll a Flodgerstone navigation check, and um, yeah. and then this week you'll also be spending checking over the ship. You should probably do that. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's it's eight eight weeks, isn't it? Yeah. Da, 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 da. Oh oh oh! Zero successes. Um, since you already uh, added on a lot, this isn't gonna uh, do worse. This isn't. This is just not gonna shave off more time. Right. Okay. If and I do 20, the twenty, then it would add at the end of the week. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I we'll do the uh, uh, check at the end of the week. 
That was third, third exact same number for the phlogiston navigation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's roll 20 for you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> I've got a, a d16 times 16. If only it would save all these for attack rolls, right? Yeah. 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 yeah 16 is pretty good for attack roll. All I'm right. We haven't had a random encounter, uh, actually. Out. You've had can random we, encounters. Can we uh, get the crew to practice drilling where we get onto the underside of the ship in case uh, we ever get something attacking us there? Yeah, that's fine. It's part of the normal. I mean, I would consider it part of normal uh, occasional uh, drills anyway, but. Yeah. All right. Solus. Mm -hmm. What are you working on? Well, uh, it's been uh, it's the next week, so this week is the poetry competition that Solas is holding for the crew. Okay. And what prize are you uh, putting forward? Uh, Solas is offering. Uh, he has a he has a, a few gems that he is offering, uh, valued of uh, ten, twenty, and fifty. Okay. Basically. Best one gets the 50 gold pieces gem, the second one gets the 20, and uh, the third one gets the 10 gold piece. All right, so you're uh, putting your for yourself forward as a, uh, a judge. Um, yeah, since I have poetry proficiency. Braxen, as captain, uh, it mm -hmm. falls to you to, well, first of all, say whether this uh, contest can go forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. And then uh, you nominate the other two judges. Oh, other two judges. Hmm. Uh, I guess we should be picking officers, or to be. the NPCs, or you could even or the NPCs. Yeah. Um, you can also be judge yourself. Well, we want two other people to read. Let's make. Uh, <laughs> let's make uh let's make uh, Lenaini. It's a it's a recitation competition for okay. the poems. Let's make Lenanius one of the judges because he's a neutral person. Right. And uh we'll make Glau one of the judges. Okay. Because he's a space owl and he's like experienced all sorts of stuff. Alright. Uh so um over the course of the uh, week, uh, you give like you give them uh, the whole week to kind of come up with uh, some mm -hmm. some poetry, um, and, and then... practice the recitation possibly. I'm sorry, and practice the rec recitation of the yeah. poems. Yeah, uh, and then at the end of the week, um, the uh, the judging will happen. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll come back to that uh, at the end of the week. All right. Okay, Ocker. And anyone who's not a judge can participate. So uh, if someone wants yeah. to uh, throw their hat into the ring, uh, they can do so. Uh, Ocker, so you're going to be uh, working on uh, airborne riding. Anything else that you want to work on? Uh, just airborne riding. Okay. Uh, Finn? Uh, just more tending of plants. Okay. And Leva? Spell research. Okay. I don't know how, how how long, how many days. We'll we'll retcon it. I mean, <laughs> there probably wouldn't be enough time to get a second spell in anyway. Okay. So. No, no, she's happy with the one. Okay. And Laftal. Cutting away more gems. Okay. Uh, probably get frustrated a few times because doing nothing but gem cutting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got a good uh, good week. 48 more. I know this is like fluff, but uh, the, would Finn be attempting to propagate that bread smelling plant because this is like a... Not exactly an important item, it's more of a curiosity to see if it is. I mean, it's been long enough since he last tried. He says he's tending plants for the time. Yeah, I guess Finn could try that. A All bread right. smelling plant? Yeah, it, when it blooms, it smells of baked bread. It smells quite oh, nice, right. apparently. Cool. Now, if only you could find something to, to hybridize this with to uh, make it smell like uh, uh, like cinnamon toast or something. 
All right, Finn. Um, what proficiency do you want to use for that? Um, probably my herbalism. Okay. Yeah, I think that's about my best bet. Okay. Yep. You do manage to uh, propagate that, so uh, you'll have a, a, a second uh, plant growing of that. Well, you can keep that one. Since you did the work for it, so. Actually, did it actually. Would you say it would have bloomed by it at some point? It probably bloomed at some point. It was probably quite nice to be in Finn's room with a fresh baked bread. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, so, um, about midweek, uh, specifically on day 52, um, on the, oh, I forgot to roll to see which, uh, shift it was on, what time. Hold on a second. All right, midway through first shift. Um, you will uh, drop out the ship drops out of uh, spell jamming speed uh, in the uh, flow river uh, and you see ahead of you a an eel ship uh, mm -hmm. drifting in the Phlogiston River uh, it has tattered fins and rigging um, and uh, it definitely looks uh, old and damaged, whether the damage is from, like, just age or uh, combat is hard to tell at the distance that you're currently at. But it is most definitely drifting. Um, we should be careful about not contaminating our air envelope. Oh, sorry, what 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 um, shift was it? Uh, first shift. First shift. I'll shut up then. I'm not on shift. Uh, I think uh, we should... Uh... Wake up the rest of the officers and uh, decide if we want to possibly check the ship out if there's uh, something in there or if we just want to avoid it. All right, Ocker, you're in command. Uh, I am. Yep. Yeah, okay, what are I second. The uh, the derelict uh, eel ship drifting. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna ask somebody to bring me a. Uh, I imagine Brighton gave me a spyglass for when I'm on command. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take a look at the eel ship with the spyglass and see if I notice anything off. Um, you do not see any uh, creatures on board. Uh, you don't see anything moving around. Uh, it's pretty far away from you at the moment. Um. But it is like slowly moving, uh, and and like kind of spinning very slowly. Hmm. The fins and rigging are all tattered. Okay. Ah. Uh... So I suggest uh, waking up other officers. Yeah, I'm gonna have. I'm going to ask him to wake up Braxton. And uh, we'll wait on... Wait, we'll wait on... Waking the casters until we decide we're going to go in there or not. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Braxton, you get up on deck, uh, having been informed that there's a... Um, what appears to be a derelict ship. Uh, uh, basically, uh, <laughs> off the port bow. I'll hand out the spyglass to you. Brax is going to take a look and say, well, there might be survivors, or it may be full of undead. Um, he's going to turn around to whatever officers uh, are awake and on deck and say, uh, has anyone got a spell we can use to see if the air's foul? So that's Finn and Solace. Yeah. Finn will glance over at some of the Haredi crew members and say, they have a way of taking care of that. That's true. That's true. Yeah, and uh, we can uh, always uh, uh, go in with a smaller ship to check it. 
Yeah, well, that's that's why I was going to say that. But if, yeah, I suppose, what size ship was this? Eel. What did you say? An eel ship. Um, just Brax. Brax knows how small an eel ship is, doesn't he? Yeah, it's twenty he? tons. Okay. I yeah. Okay. We've we should... seen eel ships before. Yeah. We should be able to handle that amount of foul air. Mm -hmm. And if need be, I think uh, we can also uh, later on get spells that refresh the air. Mm. If the Horwaiti's ability is not enough. Um, I think we should uh, get close to it and then check it out. Yeah, we could uh, could take the flitter and uh, do a flyby, and then uh, go in if we decide so. Okay, that will mean somebody loses their spells. I mean, we have the we have San Fayan for that if needed. Yeah, or Lanelli. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. So you close within weapons range. Uh, you do have a better uh, view on it now. Um, the, yeah, let's uh, get... the paint is peeling, uh, on it. You can tell through the spyglass. Uh, you still see nothing moving aboard it. Let's, um, let's get some archers ready, but tell them to hold off firing unless, unless, uh, so something attacks us when we get, get on, on board. Well, you're within weapons range, not within, uh, Oh, right. Sorry. Range. Yeah. We're not yeah. on the same, he same hex. Yeah, so, sorry, what I mean is uh, get archers ready for when we do get close to it. Okay. Um, so do you want to yeah. get on, onto the flitter up. and take the flitter over, or what? We we're going also, over the flitter? We should also wake up Leva and Laftal and ask if they want to come. Yeah, If they okay. don't want to come, they can just uh, stay, uh, stay in bed. Yeah, okay. Levi immediately goes to Laftal and says, Hey, hey, Bean, come on, mm. let's plant the bean. You can't grow it here. If we're out, out of the Flodgestan. No, we're in the Flodgestan. No, we're, no, the we're still on the Flodgestan. I thought we were out. Mm. No, we just no, found no, a no. derelict ship. Oh, well, okay. We, we, are, out, <laughs> we are out once we cross the crystal, the crystal sphere. With sudden enthusiasm, Lever, you inspired <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So she goes, hmm, well, okay. I mean, okay just... Yeah, she, she she wants to go with. To the, yeah, to the, I, I uh, want to go with as well. It's, uh... A change from, from, from doing the same thing for weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so everyone is... Uh... Uh, awake and uh, prepared up on deck. Yeah. Uh, there was a suggestion of doing a flyby to check the air with the flitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, although Finn's saying that might not be a problem. Yeah, but we still should do it. Uh, yeah, okay. Seeing as, uh, Finn... that, that way we can keep ah. our ship, uh, ship in uh, weapons range that they can use the, every weapon if, uh, if there is some danger. Well, I still have my augury memorized. I can do an augury. Braxton's going to bring his owl. Mm -hmm. Do you want to do an augury, Laftal? Yeah. Well, half an hour before we go in, obviously. All right. Well, are no, you going to... Um... Okay, so there was uh, the suggestion of doing a flyby with the um, flitter to check the air. Um, yeah. and a closer look if there's anything that might uh, sign danger. Let's take one or two who, who are waiting in case we need them. I was well, about to suggest that myself. He already did. Um, well, not specifically I, with the flitter. I meant on the flitter. Yeah. As we do the flyby, just in case we brush up against foul air and foul yeah. the air we're breathing. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, the flitter is so small that uh, whatever air is on that eel is instantly going to affect the flitter. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right, so is everyone going to be aboard the flitter, or do you just want, like, uh, 
a couple of her weighty and um, some other people, like like the, a helmsman and one or two other people, or something like that. Well, I will go on the flitter. I'll go on the flitter. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah, and we'll have a couple of. Is two enough? Yeah. To do twenty tons. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Braxton's going to wear that new ring and the new ring of protection plus two, so if that's cursed he'll find out and he's going to wear that cloak uh, where he put the cloak on before but the fight ended okay. um, so if that's if that's cursed he'll find out <laughs> Suggestion? Uh -huh. Suggestion? If you, if you put on the ring, try and take it off again Same for yeah. your cloak and stuff well, he's already put it on and taken it off. Yeah, he's already taken the clo cloak off. Um, the ring, uh, which, ring uh, which what's mention. the other ring? This is the uh, ring from the Cavill Cube, the gold ring with an unusual shaped spider design, which our detections told us was a ring of protection plus two, but it, it, gotcha. it might okay. be cursed. Sorry, I thought you, um, I thought you were indicating two rings. No, no, no. He's just going to wear that rather than the one he has. And uh, if that turns out to not be cursed, he'll um, he'll give his other ring to one of the NPCs. Okay. Question, old. Mm -hmm. If you had a cloak of protection uh, plus two and a ring of protection plus two, and uh, one of them was cursed, would they just cancel each other each other out? Depends entirely <laughs> on what the curse is. <laughs> like. There's lots of different curses. Curse, a cursed item isn't just like, oh, it's minus one, it's minus two, or whatever. So, well, in this yeah. case, if they were just the uh, curse was just the opposite of the effect. Uh I mean, you you wouldn't be able to take the cursed item off, so like it's it's not just the opposite, like canceling it out. But it depends on uh, certain things. You may have to actually uh, experience that at some point. All right, so um, it sounds like everyone's going to go aboard. Uh, so who do you want to pilot the uh, flitter? Sunfeon or Lanelius? I don't think we need to use a big spellcaster when we're just going from one ship to another. So, so you're, so you're, you does Sunfeon does healing, yeah? I mean, he's I mean, a priest, yeah. Yeah, so we should use Linalius and and hang on to Sunfreon, okay? Because Linalius can can also help um, defend the flitter. Okay. Why? Logically, going by that logic, why don't you just use Arcus to do it? I mean, yeah, technically, I only have two spell slots, and okay. Yeah. All right. If you want to burn up your spell slots, that's fine. Yep. We'll do that. Well, then. it's not uh, not really burning up. It's more of a uh, blocking Using. them. Yeah. And if Ocker's willing, yeah. that's fine. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm willing to yep. do it. All right. Okay. All right. So Ocker, you get on uh, the helm of the flitter. Everyone else piles aboard. You uh, uh, ask to her ready to come along with you. So that we're not taking an NPC other than the two. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Laftal, do you want to cast uh, Augury right before you go? Oh, after they've cleared the air. It would be a case of they clear the air, then we, uh, what happens on our approach into the ship. Okay. Because um, I'm presuming that the air is fouled. You're presuming that it's fouled, okay. So you're just gonna, you're gonna wait until you actually are ready to board it, okay? Yeah. Old, quick, yep. quick, quick question. Mm-hmm. Uh, would uh, would race dead work in uh, the phlogiston? Yes, it does. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure uh, sure that I didn't have that uh, pointlessly memorized. Uh, but if uh, anyone like dies of uh, like basically exposure, like lack of air, mm -hmm. uh, they petrify in the flow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not that worried about that. <laughs> Would you have to do like stone to flesh first? <laughs> no, no, you they you become unpetrified when uh, brought into non deadly air. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> and and you revive. This is very common knowledge. Yeah. 
Yeah. There, there are there are tales of finding like thousand year old warriors in the flow. There are tales of, um, you know, finding like uh, lost heroes. There are tales of finding lost villains, <laughs> stuff like that. So, yeah. So we might be able to rescue someone. And and one thing that that everyone fears when traveling through the flow is that they get they like go overboard and then the ship that picks them up is like an illithid or a neo gi vessel or something like yeah. that okay so braxton says right um if there's no survivors then uh it's treasure but if there's survivors we're rescuing them and technically mm -hmm. it's their stuff but presumably their players okay so you uh take off in the flitter and uh, travel towards the eel ship um and you're just breaching the air envelope right that's all you're doing yeah initially yeah okay um so you do so and immediately realize that indeed the air isn't just fouled it is deadly everyone needs to make a saving throw versus poison please <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't have my saving throws coming up because I don't have a person, but I can do. Well, your ring of protection plus two will give you a bit more. Yeah, that's, this true. Time. No that's token. true. No token. I mean, you can still just roll the thing from the. Should end. I just roll without adding on? Because I should be getting yeah. four. You can just roll a d20. I don't know that it's. I don't know that it's not. Uh, cursed. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, just roll and uh, old says that if it works or not. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, I need to check the uh, her weighty. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. Anyone fail? No. Oh, I succeeded. All right. Yep. All right. So um, the air is definitely foul. You uh, begin to uh, cough and choke. Um, and uh... wait, did I have to roll two? Yes. What? What's the saying, Joe? Poison. Oh, am I immune to it? It's, it's not po actual poison. It's deadly air. Yeah. Uh, didn't someone yeah, have a ring or help. something that protected from it? Okay, so I, um, I both know. of your Herwady uh, fall unconscious, as does Ocker, your helmsman. Everyone no. else is okay. Uh, okay, can we go back and get some more Herwady? Well, your helmsman uh, fell unconscious. Yeah, okay. someone needs to sit on the... Uh, <laughs> I can, can I make healing proficiency check uh, to try and wake them up? No, they can't be woke woken up until you get fresh air. Okay, who sits on the chair? Braxton's going to be coughing and he's going to say, that someone get on the helm now and take us back to our ship. <sighs> I don't need my magic as much as you guys do. I'll sit on the helm. Okay. All right. So uh, you uh, get on the helm and uh, pilot back. Uh, as soon as the uh, uh, you enter your um, the air envelope of the uh, dolphin, um, the uh, two Herwady and uh, Ocker, uh begin to revive, wake up, um, and uh, it's like yeah, I mean it, it's like coughing, choking. <laughs> It's terrible air, and then all of a sudden, oh, so much better, kind of thing. Yeah, just, just yeah, so relief nice. washes over you as you get back into a uh, fresh air envelope. Bra Braxton's going to um, uh, ask for some other Hawaii. How many have we? How many have we got? Was it? Um, let's get. Let's take some more with us. So, so last gives some uh, some herbs that uh, we'll just. Uh, East, uh, on, uh, east, uh, uh, pain or whatever it, the feeling they got. Basically, make breathing a bit easier. 
I mean, as soon as they Let's... get back into fresh air, it's it's fine. They're they're yeah yeah, but this is role playing. I think we should we should let these guys have a break. Uh, let's take. Uh, I'm not saying that Solas is saying that we take them back. Solas is just giving them herbs to ease up their uh, fi- their. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, what I mean is we're going to go back. Um, we'll go back with uh, some other Hawaii. Do we know if they would suffer even worse detrimental effects if they were re-exposed to the same thing, like a cumulative effect? Uh, well, you know that uh, um, if you don't get fresh air in time, eventually you will die. But uh, no, right. well, yeah, now that you're back in fresh air, point... they're they're fine. Yeah, Braxton... is it reset to a status yeah. quo. Braxton says, "I want the the fastest Hawaii we have." I could just lend him my ring of that would uh, essentially make him not need to breathe air. He wouldn't be affected by it. It would use up a charge, but... Can we put that on one of Hawaii's? Yeah. I, well, yeah. we assume they've got a ring finger. Yeah. They're humanoids. So they can wear rings. Now just uh, FYI, um, please deduct 240 uh, man days worth of air from your battle dolphin. Okay. Well, that sucked. Yeah, we can well, just we'll, refresh we'll, it the we'll, next we'll, day. Yeah, we'll be getting it back. Uh, and I assume our fresh air from our small ship to might have offset the deadly air a little. On the eel, not enough. Yeah, it won't be much. It's like a it's like a drop in the ocean. Yeah. Right. Would so, right. Go ahead, Braxton. Braxton says to the... go, go ahead, Braxton. Go on, go on. Okay, Braxton says to the Hawaii. Okay, so we know it's we know it's poisonous air, and uh, the the two crewmen here were unable to uh, clean up the air fast enough. So I want I want the most capable Hawaii, and uh, I believe my colleague Laftel here is going to lend one of you a ring, which will keep you awake. So we're going to come in and and whatever ritual you cast for creating air, you you need to do it and be doing it as we come into contact with the air. So we'll have a, we'll try to do a countdown from the helmsman. How's that sound? Uh, Should I just go with me and him? Because even if I fall unconscious on the helm, he will still be unaffected and he can refresh air and I will just naturally revive. Can so he do t- the can he do problem? The himself? the um the the leader of the Haredi um says, um, well the problem is is that uh, one of us cannot fully refresh the air of a ship of that size. It would still yeah, take so multiple wanna... of us. We could we could do some help, but it would not be enough to completely freshen the air. I want to yeah, take. If... That's why I want to take extra people so that if some of you fall unconscious, yeah, but be if more... we do us. If we do this one at a time, one person to bump it up from deadly to just fouled or whatever the next step is, that at least the next group that comes out won't instantly fall unconscious. No, why don't you go over with? Um, why don't you go over with? No, someone the helmsman needs to stay awake. Yeah, I am the helmsman currently. Okay, you well, stay on the helm. You keep that ring, and we take over a full crew of Huwaiti with the rest of us waiting here. And they all try to fresh the fresh in the air. Well, the, the one, the one, it, they would definitely get it back up to fouled. Uh, one, yeah. one of them would get it to fouled as opposed to deadly. So that would uh, wake anyone up who's unconscious. Okay, so one of them can have your ring then, and uh, and then and then you won't fall asleep if it's foul. I mean, I might fall asleep, but I can still go back on the helm afterwards. Actually, that's the point. Can I? Yeah. If I... Yeah, you can. You're still connected to it. Yeah. All right. Because right, the whole thing with falling glitches and losing your spells, but <laughs> you've already so, put your power into it. So how many? How many do you say we can pack in on a flitter? Well, quite a lot, but you don't need all of them to freshen the air on a. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of extra in case some fall asleep. Right, but if one of them is wearing the ring, he can bring it up to. Uh, 
Oh, out. yeah, yeah, got you. Yeah, got and, you. Then, and then the rest All right, okay. So it's a fail safe at the very least over time or guarantee right. to bring up. All right. Well, then we can we can go back with a. Let's let's make it four Huwaiti instead of two. Okay. And the rest of us go back, and we we we'll leave these two. Um, Braxton's going to thank him and say, uh, "Have a have a rest before you go back on duty." All right. Mm-hmm. Um. Which... Okay. Ah. So four Huwaiti and a Lafl. Just to freshen the air. Because again, keep in them? mind, keep in mind that that not only is the air going to be fresh, but it's going to be completely enshrouded in fog, dense, thick fog that you can barely let's, see through. Let's go with, let's go with, and we'll... Um, <clears throat> that one we'll go with, in any How case. long does it take to dissipate? Brax is, Brax is going to stay on the flitter. Oh, let me double check. He's suggesting we all stay on the flitter. Uh, real fast, we... Solus had something that he wanted to say as well. Sorry. Uh, it was just that uh, uh, depending on how many Horvati we have, we could... Uh, and if we have spells, pre- spells that kind of refresh air, we could just uh, merge the air envelopes of our two ships, and that way no one would uh, fall unconscious. Yeah, that's actually better doing it that way. Just merge our battle doors. Yeah. And we take the hit and then just refresh our air. Okay. Because that small yellow ship's not going to encompass the dolphin down to deadly. Okay. Well, then we land the flitter then and. It's only going to be for a brief moment. Go up with a battle dolphin and yeah, they can mitigate the damage. How well, what way they do we have? We'll take the hit on the air and then we'll deal with the air being not fresh after we've dealt with the ship, so we don't have any fog while we're in case any undead come out of it. Depending on how far down it goes. Yeah, I mean you're you're looking at at least uh, ten minutes from the, the Herwedi with the the fog. Hmm. I mean, how many Horvati do we have? We had thirty, but we lost four, so we should be on twenty-eight. I mean, I can do my augury to see if something's going to attack us, or a within the ten-minute wait while we're waiting for the fog to dissipate. I know at least we'll know. If I don't get any reading for my augury, then we just wait out the fog and we just treat it like any other exploration. All right. So you want to bring your ship in, have the Heredi freshen the connected air envelope? No, no. We should we should wait till afterwards, because there'll be fog. Yeah, you, you just interrupted me before I could get to that. <laughs> Sorry. Just like merge your air envelopes, have the Heredi uh, freshen the air, and then wait for it to d- dissipate. Yeah, and I can use my augury to know if we're going to be attacked. Okay. Oh, okay, we can do it that way. And then we just I mean, treat... I mean, the air envelope should be big enough that we don't have to go too close with to the other ship. Or I could even do a step further in that um, I could relay out this course of action. What will happen to us upon merging the air envelopes and waiting for the fog to disappear? In other words, what Will we be attacked or something? You know, will there be woe in danger or something? That would be like the the augury result. Alright. Because it's all actions within a half an hour period. <clears throat> well, that's well, specific it, I mean, upon a course of a... Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's specific to what you ask. Mm-hmm. Alright, so you lay out that course of action and you want and cast the augury? Yeah. Uh, right, you've sat on the helm, sorry. I just remember. Oh yeah, <laughs> never mind. Yeah, I can't. So no augury. <laughs> Who remembered that? Because funny enough. <laughs> yeah. Um, well. All right. That's a good point. I completely forgot about that. So yeah, uh, I don't need my bring your uh, ship in close. Uh, and again, keep in mind the the air envelope of a ship is three times the size of the ship. So mm-hmm. yeah, like you you've got a considerable amount of space, even once you. Breach the air envelope. Yeah. Um, I think your ship is probably low enough on, on air right now, since you haven't said anything about refreshing it, that uh, yeah. your ship is immediately going to be fouled uh, when you 
we... Didn't we refresh it just before we went in the flow? Because one of the Huati... We did something. I can't remember what it was. Uh, we definitely had it refreshed, because I remember you being happy about it being refreshed slightly. Before we went in. Does anyone remember what I think was? you meant my obscurement spell. Oh, uh, yeah. That, yes. Oh, that, yeah, that would have uh, refreshed it. That's right. I couldn't remember what it was. All right. Um... Okay. Yeah, with a cloudscape again stuff. And yeah, it was day day twenty six here was refreshed. So we've had fourteen days in wild space and what is it now? Eight weeks in the phlogiston of of using up here. Okay. Uh I think that's still going to take you down to Fald. Yeah, okay. Okay, so um, you uh, breach the uh, air envelope of the other vessel, and uh, indeed, immediately, um, you can feel the uh, the air mixing. Um, your air becomes uh, quite stale, and um, you're occasionally like, <coughs> <coughs> kind of, you know, like, you, you have some trouble breathing, but uh, it's just bad air. It's like stale air now. Uh, the Herwadi immediately begin to uh, generate their fog clouds, and uh, that enshrouds your ship uh, in dense fog, um, which is certainly kind of creepy because uh, you got this dense, uh, nearly opaque, you know, white fog, uh, but rainbow colors are filtering through now, and uh, you're getting that kind of dull, creaking sound of your ship um, muffled by the fog and, and everything like that. Um, but about uh, uh, ten minutes later, uh, within about ten minutes, the, uh, the fog will abate and your air will be uh, quite fresh. That's going to set you back all the way back up to full on air, so you can go ahead and, and set that. That is specifically on, let's see... Uh, day 52 out of 56 for eight weeks. And now the Eagle ship also has fresh air. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Okay. Um, so you'll have four days uh, air use after this uh, to wrap up the eighth week. Study question. If someone was in a uh... I'm going to figure the name of that spell now. Ah, uh, that plant spell that puts someone in suspended animation. Um, Softwood. Yeah, yeah, that spell. Um, it wouldn't activate if they were in dead air. It would Correct. if they were in fresh air. Yeah. So if there was so, someone, if there's someone on board with uh, um, in Softwood, uh, they will be coming out of it. I think in about within a half an hour. If I remember yeah, correctly. it takes half an hour, um, but it starts dissolving after in ten minutes. Yeah, something like that. So if there is someone aboard this ship in Softwood, they will be uh, reviving in in about twenty minutes. Okay, uh, so you can hear your ship, um, or you can hear the uh, the eel ship. But uh, you still do not see any any movement aboard it. Okay. Am I? How are we getting to that ship? Uh, well, unless we want to go back on the flitter and land on it. Oh, I've, I've already posed. used my magic, so we might as well. Well, I mean, you're you've already breached the air envelope, so you could just yeah, pull it's up just convenient. It and board. Oh, yeah, I suppose so. We could just. Yeah, it's up to you, though. To it. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I mean, if we're worried about undead coming onto our ship, then we could we could <laughs> go over on a rope or something. I'd rather have the crew backing us up with arrows and stuff. They can be outside yeah. the melee okay. range. Yeah, let's get loads of archers on the um, on the fighting top. And we'll take the front line. And, uh, yeah, and we'll, we'll drag in with boarding pikes and stuff and tie up and then go over. I'd imagine most of the sh did you um do you think it's going to uh be safe and not fall apart? I mean, once we start bringing well, it up to our ship. 
Bryce can try that out when we go there. <laughs> I guess I can mean, roll a carpentry check. Yeah. All right, we'll go ahead and roll a carpentry check to uh, get a feel for that uh, that ship. Yeah. Just scrolling down to my NWPs. This is this is going to be fun because I'm obviously going to roll a terrible roll. <laughs> no, it's not too bad. Uh, it's okay. definitely old and decrepit. Um, yeah. It it looks like it will it, it, it it's it's still space worthy. Yeah. Um, but uh, you you kind of like warn everyone that there might be some loose boards, <laughs> some rotted boards, yeah. something like that. Uh, it's it's very hard to say at this point, but yeah. uh, um. They're definitely like overall structurally, it it appears that it's mostly intact. Um, yeah, Bra but just like Braxton, watch your foot, watch your step. Watch yeah, your foot. yeah. Brax just tell people to watch it on the staircase as well, because staircases sometimes cave in. Yeah. Well, if since I don't have my magic, I don't really need to take much with me, to be honest. Other than my thief tools, I don't even need my backpack. I can be fairly light. I can scout a path. Yeah, that's what I do. I will scout a path once we've rallied the ship together. All right, so Braxton, are you bringing the ship alongside? Putting yeah. out the boarding plank? Boarding plank? Yeah, we'll do now. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, and are you guys going to wait to go aboard? Have Laftel go first kind of thing, or what? Uh, well, I, mean... I think... So Solas can go with Laftel since Solas memorized a uh, fly for today. I think I think Braxton would have had to have gone over the plank to, to check out the ship, wouldn't he? Not necessarily. Okay. I mean, you can if you want. Do you want to go ahead, Laftel? Oh. Otherwise, I'm just going to get on the ship. No, I'll go on ahead. That's what I do. I scout. So okay. Solas casts fly and starts hovering after Laftel. And or other people who wish to join that can be quiet, I guess. Flying is quiet. Oh, we get a deck plan. My... It's been so long. Hey, I made I made this deck plan a while ago. Uh, for uh... Oh, recycling assets. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm totally Bra recycling it. Braxton, I mean, Brax. Uh, recycling is good. Mm -hmm. All right, so Braxton's I'm gonna put gonna... the rest of the party. Oh, well, Solus, uh, you should be here as well. Leva also should be in full health, I think. Yeah, I think she stepped away, though, so... Alright. Is anyone else coming along, or is it just us two? I mean, the ones that can be quiet. Finn will I mean... change into a cat and come along. <laughs> okay. A larger cat, just in case. Uh, house cat, or something like a tiger, or a lynx, or bobcat kind of thing? What, what, are, you looking at? Um, what are you thinking? I'll go with a tiger. Okay. Braxton wants to take out his owl okay. and, and say hula rat and uh, try to turn it into the 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 big owl. Giant owl? The giant owl, yeah. I don't know how much damage a giant owl can do. Right, so keep in mind that its, it's observation abilities are limited to its small form. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that it can Give it help, help defend us. Right. You... I mean, you could, uh, we could send the owl to fly around the ship and under it and such. Yeah, would that help? Uh, if it's in the small form, it has observation ability. All right, I'll keep it in the small form. Okay. Um, is that is that a small owl? Yeah, it's, it it's just a normal horned owl size. Okay, all right. I thought a big one could fight, but yeah, a small one would do. Um, well, yeah, but you Braxton's... can always change it later. Okay, Braxton's going to say, um, we need to check out this ship. Uh, please listen out for anything on there and let us know. All right, are you sending it specifically to fly around the uh, ship first? Yeah, I'll send it to fly around. There should be, there should be, there's two windows at the front. Yeah. So Braxton will say, can you please have a look through those windows and see if you can see anything inside? <clears throat> okay. Um, so it, uh, uh, leaps forth from your, uh, arm and, uh, almost imperceptibly, uh, flaps away from you. 
um, towards the uh, front of the ship. And let's see. Um, Owls are pretty silent when they fly, aren't they? Yep. And this one is magical, so. Yeah. It informs you telepathically that it does not detect any uh, creatures moving inside through those windows. Uh, flies all around and, and uh, reports back that it does not uh, detect anything uh, moving on the uh, outside hull either. Thank you. Uh, Braxton taps his shoulder and says, uh, take, it, take a perch. All right, lands on your shoulder and uh, perches there. I guess the strike team goes in. The okay. scout team. So Laftel, Solus, and uh, Finn, you uh, you board. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Laftel, are you trying to move silently? I can, I will I can move silently, but I don't think I can, there's any point in me trying to be stealthy if Solus is there flying behind me. Unless Solus hangs back a tiny bit. Well, in terms of uh, uh, hiding in shadows, yeah, but you can still try to move silently. Yeah, I can start to stifle the noise I make and try to move carefully as well. Right. This can be. So what's your score? Dodgy floorboards, uh, ninety. Yeah, it is uh, going to be harder once... because of the uh, the the wood. But I mean, um... like you're, you're intentionally trying to pick and choose your your route. Mm -hmm. Oh, eighty. 80? Oh, All right. right. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, Solus keeps a few feet distance from between us when he flies behind you. Okay. Laftel, you uh, slip across. Uh, Finn pads across as well, and uh, Solus uh, hovers over. Um, Laftel, none of the floorboards squeak under you as you uh, <clears throat> step onto the deck. Uh, you can see that uh, um, there is there are weapon emplacements. The weapon emplacements, the weapons themselves, are pretty clearly in too poor shape to be salvageable. Um, Anything intact will be magical. But uh, 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 not necessarily. But um, they're they're clearly broken down. A lot about catapult shots. Um, yeah, there's some catapult shot. I mean, it's just stone, so. Yeah, yeah stone, but we, still we, we, used, we, we used some before we entered the phlogiston, so we could uh, resupply the ones we used. And you I can use it like, as... You, you probably wouldn't go up and count, but you can see that there is a catapult shot. Mm -hmm. So, like, at, at the end you can collect that and... I, yeah. Uh, it, unless, of course, you're run, fleeing for your lives. Um... All three of you, give me an intelligence check, um, but there's going to be a penalty to it. I failed. <laughs> this laugh was distracted on being quiet. I succeeded. I don't think you can give a big enough penalty, so that would make Solas fail. Not the three, yeah. no. Alright, uh, Solas, um, you noticed something in, uh, and pointed out quietly to uh, your two companions. Um, there's a gouge in one of those boards that looks like it might be a claw mark or something like that. Okay. Uh, how big uh, it is? Big. It's not Good not little. like a, um, a a claw mark from uh, Finn's tiger form. Bigger. That's basically Finn, all you can. Okay. Finn you will can. go take a close look at it and see if he can determine anything. Okay. Uh, you uh, can't Arabi smell anything, the... Finn. Sorry, were okay. you saying something? Arabi, we are still on the deck. Yeah. Uh, the Solas will basically. Well, hold on, hold on. Um, sorry, I, I thought that Finn had, had said something. Um, so Finn, you, you, let me uh, do that first. You, you didn't say something. I didn't interrupt you, right? Right. Okay. Um, so you, uh, you pad over to the uh, claw, sniff it. You don't smell anything other than like old wood, mold, mildew kind of thing. Um, and you don't recognize what it might be from. 
Uh, but being closer, you can see that uh, there are some other gouges. Uh, clearly, multiple claws swiped there, but only one of them was uh, noticeable to uh, Solas. <clears throat> Solas would basically, if we are still on the view of the rest of the party, signal them uh, that uh, there's Mark. Uh, or, uh, actually, Solas will you... just float back and tell them what uh, we found. Okay. Since it's not that far. Braxton will pass on what the owl told him that there's no one visible through the front windows. Um, Braxton? Mm hmm. Now that we know about, well, Finn actually can't talk, so never mind. Mm. <laughs> Could Leva get uh, Finn's uh, thoughts with the ESP amulet? Yeah, that would be awfully specific, though, wouldn't it? It doesn't it function can... as um, telepathy. Well, Leva has uh, memorized the fly spell, so she could go across. Finn still can't talk to you, though, regardless, so... And unfortunately, he can't cast Gift of Speech on himself. <laughs> <laughs> Would that actually work if it no. was on the scroll? No. no. He's not a normal animal. Would you speak, speak with animals work with uh, Fino when he's changed? Maybe. I'd have to go look at that. Not um, that I have memorized it. So it was just, no, uh, I don't. Yeah. Either. So, all right. So you're... you're you're up on the deck. You've uh, noticed the uh, the gouge marks. Um, there is the stairs down below decks here. Mm -hmm. I see if I can listen. I put my ear to the floor. Okay. I mean, I'm sure Finn can pick up in the queue on that. What, what is to. your score? Uh, I think it's like 50. One second. Oh, it doesn't matter what your score is. This uh, this is good enough to work. Um, you do not hear anything other than the creaking of the ship below decks. Like you, you put it out. You put your ear to the the decking, right? Yeah, I yeah. go right down to the floor. Yeah, you don't hear anything other than the creaking creaking of the ship. No, I just shrug back and I say, "Well, I guess whisper. I can't hear anything." So Finn uh... will start padding down the stairs slowly, sniffing the air as he goes. Okay. And boop. I will trace him, but I will also hide in shadows. Move silently. All right. Uh, so Finn, you uh, pad down into a uh, pretty clear, uh, pretty uh, full uh, cargo hold. And Laptal, you are following. Mm-hmm. This time with hide in shadows. Okay. Solas would also follow a few feet behind uh, after he had uh, went over and told Braxon and the rest of what we found. All right. Uh, there there might be signs of monsters. You are over here. Um, you go ahead and make room for the other uh, characters. It's not letting me move my token, I think, maybe because of the... Oh, yeah, you're probably on the wall. Yep. There we go. <laughs> now I can make some room. All right. Let me get uh, Laftel. Uh, <laughs> I'm Solis. loving my view of this. I've got three health bars in, in a big black rectangle. Oh, you can actually see the health bars? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I can see health bars of 11. Yeah, I can. Alexander. Doesn't matter, really, but that's, no, that no, is no. interesting. <laughs> Lewa is going to follow the others, by the way. Okay. Are you flying or... Oh, yes. I'll, I guess I'll fall along, too. All right, well, Bra hold on. Let me actually see if you can uh, fly, because I, I didn't re-roll re the uh, uh, wild search check chance. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Right. Never mind. Also, uh, Levi, yeah. you should be in full health. Braxton's also going to get onto the top deck. All right. Um, so, uh, Ocker and uh, Braxton, you've both gotten onto the top deck? Yeah. Braxton's, yeah. Braxton's trying to be quiet, and uh -huh. he'll try to help. Um, I could get over the rail without making a lot of noise. All right. Um, Leva, the spell went off, so you are flying down there, uh, following after. Um, okay. Braxton, give me a carpentry check. 
Okay. <laughs> this is to avoid falling through the floor. Oh no, it's you know, discover it's something. Creak like anything. Uh where's carpentry? There we go. Ooh, oh that's that's pretty good. Divine inspiration. Yep. Yep, you uh, uh, you do not creak any of the uh, boards, and you uh, are able to help uh, uh, Ocker over without creaking any of the boards either. Nice. You uh, you were able to spot which ones were bad and which ones were likely to yeah. creak. All right. Uh, so those, can those I were, send my... uh, uh, Just a second. Uh, those were below deck. Um, mm -hmm. So it is dark down here. Um, the... Uh, cargo hold is full of uh, uh, very old crates. There is dust covering everything. Um, Solas uh, puts a cloth uh, on his face to protect from the dust. All right. And you can also see uh, some uh, more claw marks on the walls mm -hmm. and uh, uh, some of the crates. Uh, and there are uh, scattered bones uh, on the floor as well. The size of the bones at a distance? Um, they appear to be uh, humanoid-sized bones. So they look mangled at all, or are they just resting? Um, it is hard to say without uh, actually investigating them. If you want to investigate them, you can actually do that. We're all in here with information. I believe Finn still has in his information, doesn't he? In... Yeah, he's also a cat, which can see pretty well in, in the dark anyway. Yeah, I can't, couldn't remember if Ion stones go with him in the shapeshifted form. It well, would actually they're... still orbit him. <laughs> well, well, they're checking that. Uh, Finn is going to creep down the hall very slowly, sniffing as he goes and checking out each door as he comes to it. Okay, but before not you go actually any... opening the doors. Yeah. Uh, before you go any further, Braxton, you'd wanted to do something up there? Yeah, Braxton wants to say to Hularat, assuming that's his name. <laughs> it is <laughs> not, but you can have that. So far as you know, he has no name, so that can be his name if you want. Okay, so yeah, he'll say to Hularat, um, don't put yourself in danger. But go down and stay behind them, and let me know if me and Oka need to come down and and help rescue them. All right. So um, those of you down below, uh, you might notice a a, a, a normal sized owl uh, flap down and take a perch, but you would. Uh, Finn would barely hear it, and the rest of you would not hear it fly. Mm -hmm. And let me check something. Are these doors open or are they broken uh, so that you can see through? Uh, you currently can't see uh, see them. Uh, you'll have to go into the hall, which currently that's where uh, Finn is. All right, so Finn, you're beginning to uh, creep down the hall? Yep. Stopping at each door, taking a sniff. Okay. Looking in if the door is open, All but right. not actually going into the rooms yet. Uh, actually, I don't know if I... For me, I can see through some of them. Yeah, all right. Um, yeah, so the uh, the doors are, like, um, not latched, so given the, uh, the ship mm -hmm. kind of tumbling and, and uh, stuff like that, um, they're, they're, like... Uh, either loosely on their hinges or um, they're partially fallen or they're swinging open and closed kind of thing. Uh -huh. So you want to move up to the uh, first door, Finn? Yep. All right. All right. Uh, I'm getting some uh, noise from your microphone, James, uh, Ocker. Oh, sorry. That's okay. All right, so um, this door is uh, is one of the ones that's uh, kind of flapping open and closed. Okay. And you are currently not smelling anything other than just the age of this ship. 
Okay. It's all like you're not smelling uh, animals. You're not smelling anything like that. It's it's very old rotting wood uh, smells and and dust and stuff like that. Okay, then uh, I'll move on to the next door. Okay, well that one uh, in particular is um, pretty clearly the uh, the remains of a galley. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a long table in there for sitting at, but uh, one of the legs has collapsed, so it's uh, fallen at an angle. And you can see, like, uh, uh, an old place for a, a cook fire and, and stove and stuff. Okay. So, for right now, I'll just move on to the next door. I'm staying okay. in the hallway for now and in sight of others. All right. Um, that door is also uh, flapping open and closed. And uh, uh, that is clearly the crew quarters. Uh, you're not seeing anything of uh, uh, anything unusual in there. There are some bones on the floor, um, and there's some bones in the uh, corridor as well. Mm-hmm. But I don't those... smell anything. No. Do those bones look like they've been uh, gnawed? Um, do you want to pick one up and take a look at it? Yeah. All right. Go ahead and give me a a, a healing check. Mm-hmm. Well, my thing, uh... It does not look like it's been gnawed. Okay. Alright. I will quietly mention this. To laughter land uh, lever. Okay. Finn? Okay, then I'll move to the next door. All right. Um, so the rest of you, uh, um, and yeah, I got that uh, thing from you, Leva. Um, do you are you advancing, or are you going to let him advance up yeah, and come so back la- and indicate to you? Solas is advancing somewhat, basically, so that he can uh, get get to help get get to help uh, Finn if there is trouble. Okay. All right, uh, Finn, the uh, door there um, uh, has fallen mm. off of one of its hinges, and uh, it is partially blocking the uh, um, uh, the doorway. Uh, all you can make out inside is uh, okay. that there is, uh, like, that's clearly quarters um, of an individual, an officer, or something like that. Um, can't really see uh, enough of the furniture to make too much out inside there. Okay. And you're not smelling anything. All right. Uh, Braxton, um, uh-huh. the, uh, the, those, uh, gouge marks are from something much larger from, uh, than a rat. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, Brax is going to say to Oka. <laughs> Yeah, he's gonna say, what, "What do you think these things are? They might still be on the ship." I'm not really sure. Okay. I guess we just stay on our toes and wait until we hear something happen. Yeah, my my owl will tell tell us if it sees danger. We'll be ready to run down. Okay. All right, Finn. You'd have to push that door open, uh, which would probably be noisy if you wanted to explore that room anymore. I will try to creep up. Yeah, you can. I go to there to see the door that seems to be off hindered. Okay, and uh, Finn, the um, final door before the uh, the door at the end of the hall. Um, that one uh, is also uh, partially off its hinge uh, and uh, blocking too much of the uh, uh, the chamber. It looks like again that is a um, uh, like an officer's quarters. Uh, you can see like part of a bed. Okay, I don't smell anything. Nope. Okay, I'll move to the final door then. 
Okay, that door is uh, flapping uh, open and closed, um, and you can clearly see that there is, uh, that is the helm chamber, there are two chairs made of pale wood in there, um, and you're just you'd just be looking at the backs of them. Okay, again, do I smell anything? You do not. Okay, this one I will go into. Okay. Um, so you wait until it flaps open and, and slip inside. Um, and this is definitely the, uh, the bridge. Um, you can see these, uh, two chairs. And now that you're getting a closer look at them, um, they're made of, uh, pale wood, uh, and they are, uh, carved. It almost looks like they're carved out of a single piece. Um... The uh, they're very unusual design, and they don't look like they would be the most comfortable for you to sit in. Almost like they were designed for a different shaped humanoid form. But you are not seeing anything moving in here. Okay. Um. Then at this point, Finn will resume human form. Okay. And turn back and whisper down the hall. I think it's clear. I'll have to look underneath the stool that's like on a hinge or something. Is there anything in there at all? Um, it's personal quarters of some sort. Um, you it would need to open the door to really get a better look because uh, it's it's like uh, on one hinge and it's partially fallen. Could I look around the side of it at all? Is there uh, a gap at all? Given that it's dark and uh, even with infravision, uh, you're, like you're you're looking through narrow angles at a at a room, so no, it's personal quarters of some kind. That that's the best you can make out. You can't really see, but you're not seeing anything uh, move in there. I think we're safe. Whatever was in here is either invisible or. Maffles. Should we just call the others? Yeah, okay. I think it's safe. Uh, I just yeah. shout up and call the others. Yeah. Safe, come down. Come just on, Oka, be... let's go. It's safe. Half on the floorboards. Yeah, I'll mention that I didn't smell anything coming from any of the rooms, so... Uh, I tried to... Well... Shall I just steal a... Cautious that there is still a... Still is chance that there is something hiding. I laughed or taunt something. If you're out here, come out and fight us, because we clearly want to fight you, not. But, you know, he, he fumbles halfway through that sentence. <laughs> Bra Brax is going to say, Hulurat, we're coming down. Make sure I don't step on you. Okay. Um, Alright, let me uh, drag your tokens over. Give me a second. I would try to move a store, but I'll just let the engineer and the carpenter deal with it all. I mean, you can easily open it. Yeah, it's just that it would they be, might uh, be able to do noisy. I was seeing Braxton just unhinge the door. Oh, That's just like a leather room. hinge, so. Oh, they rotted. Uh, you're not sure if they were. You'd need to take a closer look at it and with better light to tell if it was rotted or or cut yeah, or something well... like that. I will draw a continual light down and just let us up because we've already shouted and announced our presence. Yeah. Okay. So I will illuminate the area. Up All right. Sixty feet. So with uh, with greater light, where do you, where do you want to look first? And keep in mind that you will have to like actually open the doors to get into those. Uh, Should we the helm room first, since we just happen to be here? Or the fighters are going to be behind us in any good event. Well, okay. Should we? Should we do the rooms nearest the staircase? You want to go in the helm room? You've already gone in the helm room. So. Well, the rest yeah. of us are already there, so... Yeah, yeah. and I'm illuminating light, so if anything's okay. now going to spring on us, you got the fighters behind us, so... Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, dark, dark here, so... Except for Laftal's dagger, so... Yeah, Brax... I'm illuminating up the area, so... Braxton's going to move up. I'll tell you what, Braxton's going to send Hulrat behind us, and say, um, stay behind us, and if anything comes out of any of those rooms, uh, let me know. 
and acknowledges. Yeah. Okay, so um, the uh, the helm chamber is uh, uh, to a certain extent fairly standard. Um, just these chairs are clearly designed uh, uh, to you know for a body unlike yours. Um, but he's still humanoid. Like, you guys could sit in it just fine. Um, depending on your form, it's either a little bit too tall or too short kind of thing. Um, clearly different sized uh, hips and legs uh, from you. Um, and looking at the bones, um, none of you are, like, none of you know anatomy, but you can't specifically say, ah, yeah, this is, this is a... a um, a creature that I, I recognize kind of thing. Um, there are pieces of skulls near some of the bones, but none of them are intact. They've been crushed. Crushed. And there are gouge marks everywhere. Whatever I killed these creatures, uh, at least didn't eat their bodies. Uh, I didn't see no knowing marks of the bones. Ben's going to look around for more scratches in here. Mm -hmm. uh, there definitely are. Um, you can't... You don't think it's from an animal that you're familiar with, Finn, uh, but mm -hmm. you don't recognize what they might be from. Uh, whatever it is, it's got pretty big claws to leave scratches like that. Is there any cupboards in here? Uh, they are, but... Uh, uh, there are, but... Uh, um... Like, the hinges on them have rotted, and uh, whatever was inside them is uh, not salvageable. Like, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm more thinking that a monster might be hiding in the cupboards. Yeah. <laughs> a monster Where cupboard. are the helm uh, salvageable? Uh, they appear to be completely intact. Yeah, you could unmount them and, and take them. There's two helms. Two uh, chairs. If... That's, uh, that's some, uh, some worth. Wow. To the person that can use the helm. I don't think you can I reshape mean, a helm, can you? It depends on what it is. I mean, I mean, you could still like, might be... like you could you could still put uh, cushions on it and try to make it more comfortable, kind of thing. And Arcane, might, Arcane might be willing to buy them, and uh, they might know who uses this. There was a I don't know. Was it a feature of Dwemerflow that you could transfer an enchantment from one item to the other? Yeah, that was not going to if... help. Yeah, I know, but it's uh... <laughs> magical fluff that allows that kind of facility <laughs> from one chair to another, like a for a fixed helm. Trans, yeah, transfer a helm to another object. I guess you would be looking at a ninth level spell minimum. Yeah, also, possible, also there's, a, there's a chance when you transfer charges from one item to another that the uh, item breaks. Yeah. Like, you would have Without... to research a ninth level spell uh, to do that, um, and I would probably say that there would be a high chance of it exploding in your face. Mm -hmm. Without throwing stuff around too much, Braxton basically wants to pull things out of those cupboards um, just to make sure there's, there's no... Um, any creatures hiding behind rotten yep. charts or anything. Yeah, you find uh, um, uh, what you what you think is the remains of an old logbook, and uh, as you pull it out, it uh, it Don't just disintegrates. <laughs> it was you. You would, you would recognize it as being completely unsalvageable, even with magic. Yeah. Well, I mean. We have well, a party with, member uh, that can read some it, but, uh... So Brax, Brax says to the others, this person, the door is shut, and this person was attacked by something. So keep your eyes open. He's going to look up at the ceiling, see if there's anything on the ceiling. Well, you would also recognize that, I mean, this ship is old. Yeah, Fair but something, something, something's chewed on people. Yeah, they've long gone. Well, based on the bones that I looked, they were not chewed on chewed. Wow, right. they were not... just killed. Right, fair enough. And the so air on the them. air on this ship was deadly. So, like, yes, yeah. hundreds. Yeah, what, whatever happened here happened a long time ago. 
Mm-hmm. Right. It takes so, hundreds of years for those pages to disintegrate. Um, has anyone got an idea if that helm might be a death helm or a life jammer? Identify it. Can we identify a helm? Uh, you could use identify on it. Oh. But there's also two chairs bolted to the deck here. Two chairs? Oh, they're probably series helms then. Yeah, I, I said two two chairs multiple multiple times. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> it's okay, I'm just... Well, um... Yeah? Definitely, uh, we're not gonna save anyone here or anything, so uh, I say we just look for anything that might be use, useful and yep. head on our well, way. That well, that helm is, uh, since it's uh, in a good condition, it's still sellable. And we want to tap magic because I do not have my spells. Uh, well, I have two well, detect so magics. Someone hand uh, Solus a screwdriver and he can get started on uh, unmounting those helms. Uh, let's let's clear the rest of the ship before we decide to salvage anything. I think well, we could possibly salvage the whole ship. Wow, the woods rotted. Yeah, the wood's not in great condition. It would take oh, you a okay. full day uh, uh, just of surveying it to determine what you could salvage off of it wood-wise. Um, yeah. And then even then, you're not getting anywhere close to the full, Anything full point stone. value of this ship. Uh, no, I was just wondering, I was wondering if we could tow the entire ship into a port and sell it. You yeah, but again, it would be you would be selling it for uh, scrap. Not only yeah. scrap, but scrap that is extremely old. Um, you're yeah, looking lots. at at maybe a few hundred GP. Yeah. Okay. Fair. Uh, yeah, fair. Was this uh, private quarters? Yes. The first two chambers uh, closest to the uh, um, the bridge are private quarters. I think we should check those uh, next. Okay. Can okay. you just pull the hinges off the, pull the door? I mean, you can off. push the door open too. It's just going to be noisy and stuff. Yeah. You want to do so in the first one? Let's join. I'll do it with assistance so it, I can hold it up, hold up the weight of the door with someone. I mean, it's no trouble at all to open it. Are we doing the first door or the second door? I'll do yeah, the first do the door first. first. Okay. Okay. Yeah, might as well go one at a time on our way back out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you uh, yeah, sounds like fun. open that uh, first door, push it open. Um, the, uh, the furniture in there is, uh, in very poor shape. None of it can be recovered. Um, but the, the bed is definitely shaped for, like, like, it's not in a shape that you recognize, um, the, 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 the construction. Uh, like, dwarf, dwarf, like, dwarves tend to make their beds a certain way. Elves tend to make their beds a certain way. Gnomes and halflings and humans all make their beds a certain way. Doesn't match any of those. Um... And it is not recoverable. The uh, 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 the mattress is clearly rotting and and um, will come apart uh, at a, there, a touch and stuff like that. Yeah. Is there anything indicative of a language that is um, legible or readable? The, the I mean the 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 logbook in the on the bridge and the uh, um, the charts, but they've disintegrated. You couldn't make anything out. Is there any, like, name of the ship, like, embossed on the side or something? Uh, if anywhere, that would be on the outside if it's anywhere. Yeah. As yeah, if we so can understand we like... language, then, yeah. So, so last we'll go check the room. All right, inside, uh, inside that room, uh, you do see an ancient uh, coffer, um, uh, bound with uh, iron, but the uh, iron has uh, rusted so you can't well, just like I'll... pick a lock and, and open it. You'll need to force that. Uh, okay. I'll say I'll mention this to the party and uh, start going through other stuff. Uh, basically, shifting uh, shifting uh, stuff uh, and uh, trying to look if there's anything uh, salvageable. We got some coins. And, and, uh, uh, well, who, who's yeah, going to try to open uh, that that coffer? Before uh, before Otheres uh, start uh, doing uh, much, Teres, or last points out that there is a 
quite a lot of dust, so you might want to cover your face. Okay. Well, breakfast is obviously Why outside. You... Mm. Just use some cloth. You want to try to just force it apart? Well, you can't uh, pick the lock on that uh, cover. Yeah, it's rusted shut. Why don't you just move the coffer outside and we can deal with it in a cleaner environment? It's bolted down, and I mean, if you try to move it, it'll all break apart anyway. Oh, okay. While, it, while others are dealing with the coffer, so I'll search the rest of the room. I haven't heard anyone uh, saying that they're dealing with the coffer, so... Okay. We do have a professional opener, don't we? Yes. Well, that's Brax, and Brax opens everything. Braxton says, "I can use I can use my lockpick if you want. You can't and, use lockpicks. Uh, and don't Bra give me that crowbar Bra as a lockpick." Braxton, <laughs> Braxton takes out his crowbar. That's not a lockpick. Well, All right, so, uh, so that's so, a key. Braxton, go ahead and, and get yourself in there so that you can. Yeah. Try to force that open. Oh, sorry, I've gone on top of someone's head. I think it's when you break something delicate. Oh, Braxton's damage, going to... anything delicate and well, it's going to get smashed. You, you could have used your lockpicks, but you didn't. No one gave um, me a chance to. You, you couldn't. You it's all picks? rusted shut. Yes. There's right. nothing to pick. Right. Okay, Braxton's going to very gently try to lever apart the lid. Okay. Uh, let's see. Go ahead and... Um... What do I do? Strength check or bend bars? Uh... So uh, let me check to see. It's like crowbar, like plus seven or something. Um, I don't think it was a magical crowbar. Go ahead and no, give me a normal just... open doors roll. Uh, open doors roll. Right, where is that? And you will get a, uh, a plus two to the. Uh... Hang on. It's uh oh, it's a percentage. No, that's Ben Bar's lift gates. Oh, sorry. Uh, open doors. Would it be better to hack all the hinges? Oh, off? I've got nine. Is that a D twenty? Yeah. There you go. And that's a success. All right. So you uh, you wedge the uh, edge of the crowbar in, and uh, with a few uh, leverings, uh, you do hear the uh, the rust uh, rip apart as. Uh, you pry the lid off. Uh, the hinges are worthless, so it's more you've just like removed the top kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and sending up mm -hmm. some uh, more dust and uh, rust dust into the air. Yeah, yeah Braxton's going to cough a bit because he didn't tie a cloth around his mm. face. All right. Uh, inside, you can uh, see loose coins um, and the remains of uh, some leather. That has rotted away, uh, and a, a pretty, uh, pretty hefty amount of uh, coins. You do not recognize the markings on the coins, and they're pretty uh, uh, badly corroded. Like they're they're covered in in um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but um, you don't need to clean them. It's pretty obvious I'm which are which. Patina. Any for, like some kind of patina on them or something? Yeah, it's it's when it's really thick and you can't really make out what the the coin, like the the image on the coin is and stuff like that. Um, they don't need to be cleaned; they can be uh, used as is. Uh, uh, Braxton's but... going to say, "Do you think we can tell how old this ship is from the coins?" You wouldn't be able to because uh, any dates on them would be in a calendar that you don't know. Oh, I see. All right. And we wouldn't have any idea what the civilization is either, unless it's one we're already familiar with. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So you collect uh a total of three hundred ancient copper pieces. And you can just add these as normal coins. Yeah, because they're functionally just normal coins. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 200 ancient silver pieces. Okay. 400 ancient electrum pieces. Okay. 600 ancient gold pieces. Okay. Uh, 400 ancient platinum pieces. Okay. 
and in the remains of a padded wooden box uh, mixed in, you find uh, one large faceted pale orange stone. Wow. Can I roll appraisal on the gem? Uh, yeah, go ahead and let's see. Uh, you have 14 now? I believe it's 14, yeah. All right. Um, you were unsure what that is. Uh, the cut is unusual, and, it? and maybe the uh, um, type of stone is, is a little unusual as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it seem valuable or mundane? I mean, it seems valuable, but whether it's 10 gold pieces, 100 gold pieces, or 1,000 gold pieces, you're not sure. I'd figured I'd be able to make at least a f difference between one and a thousand. No, because like um, some of it's based on rarity and stuff like that. You don't really you don't recognize a stone. You failed the check. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. That's you. You can't tell what what it is. Fair enough. All right. So you want to check the uh, next room? There's yeah, nothing, the, anything, searching yeah, the rest of this chamber, that. you don't find anything uh, valuable. Okay. I'll go check out the next room. All right, well, the next room is this one here. Okay. Yeah, I'll go check it out. Okay, so you uh, push open uh, that door, um, and uh, these are uh, more officers' quarters, very similar to the other one. Um, the, uh, the bed has, uh, collapsed down, and you see a, uh, coffer, uh, rusted against the wall as well. Okay. So we got another rusted shut coffer. Should we break it open? It is smaller than the other one, just FYI. Do you want to borrow my lockpick? Uh, I don't think that's going to help. He's talking about Do his crowbar. Do you have a crowbar? Yeah. He's talking oh. about the crowbar. <laughs> that, that isn't a lockpick. Fine, I'll take it. So I'll try to crowbar it open. At least someone right. sees sense in this party. So, just roll d d20? Yep. Oh, what's your strength? Currently, uh, 16. Okay. So, yeah, you want to get, uh, um, 9 or below. Does the crowbar modify that at all? It is. Uh, just roll and, and I'll let you know. All right. You are unable to, uh, pry the, the lid off that. Mm. Does somebody else want to try? Probably Braxton, I would assume. The other yeah, Braxton, Braxton can, Braxton can give it a go. Okay. He'll try up the other end of the box just in case, uh, um, in case uh, Ocker's loosened it for him. Okay. All right, Braxton, you oh, are yeah. able to uh, pry the lid off of that. Uh, uh, that coffer. Yeah, uh, us, uh, Braxton. The, the same result on every <laughs> check that is same. Yeah, check. there's something <laughs> going on here. <laughs> Braxton, Braxton um, pats his uh, crowbar and says, thanks, lockpick. All right. So inside, um, you do not find as many coins. You find uh, three ancient Electrum pieces. OK. Nine ancient gold pieces. Okay. And uh, two ancient platinum pieces. Okay. Uh, in addition, uh, there are some uh, loose stones. Um, one large, opaque, polished rectangular stone with swirled green shades. Uh, four yes. opaque, polished red oblong stones. Three transparent green faceted stones, and one tiny flawed blue green faceted stone. I 
fancy. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you want to search in this room? Uh, you, what was the other thing you mentioned other than the box? I thought you mentioned something else. Uh, there's a, a collapsed bed. There's some uh, other wrecked furniture. Um, you would guess that I given mean... the position of the uh, the room and the slightly less valuable furniture of what you can tell, uh, this is the the other one was probably the captain's quarters. These are probably the spelljammer's quarters. Okay. I'll continue on to the next room. You could do a quick search, uh, look around. I mean, other people okay. can do that too. If he wants yeah, to move if somebody on. else wants to look in there, they can. I'm going to head on to the next room to see if there's another box. All right. Anyone want to? Anyone else search in that room? Or are you moving on? Yeah, we'll uh, search. I'll search for secrets and stuff. I mean, I'll start with the top room. Okay. I'll help left. I'll tell you what, Braxton's going to go back into the helm room. And he's going to search for, like, secret compartments. Okay. Hidden under the deck or something. Okay. Finn will help Acker then. Okay. Um, Laftel and Solus, you do not find any secrets in that room. Let me roll for Braxen. You do not find any secrets in uh, the uh, on the bridge. Uh, okay. Acker, that chamber... Um, are the uh, crew quarters? There's some more bones uh, on the ground, um, and you do not find any uh, valuables uh, amongst the uh, the remains of the furniture. No boxes or anything, or mm -mm. crate or chests. Nope. Okay. And that is the galley in the small room. Uh, off of it is the pantry. All of the food in the pantry is completely rotted away into nothingness. Fair enough. No silverware in the galleon. I'm sorry? No silverware in the galleon. Silver variant to the of the galleon? Silverware. Cutlery. cutlery. Oh, cutlery. No, no, there's no cutlery. Any silverware. Silverware. No, sorry. Um, no, it, it was probably wood. I think you should run through this place if it's a tap magic, then basically unmount the house. Uh, we that... still have the cargo to check if there is anything okay. salvageable there. All right, you want to start those... prying open the uh, um, the cargo containers? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. While they're doing that, Finn will cast a detect magic and sweep the rest of the ship. Okay. Is that um... regular glass? Or is that like? Any like glass steel or anything on the windows? Yeah, it's the they're they're just glass. Oh okay. One day we'll find glass steel that's just been abandoned. <laughs> Alright. So you um Ocker and Leva, you're starting to uh, check through the um uh, cargo hold and yeah. Finn begins to sweep mm -hmm. with uh um detect magic. Uh, looks like the uh, cargo that this was carrying was uh, probably once fine cloth, but it's all uh, worthless now. Oh. So there are no, there is no salvageable uh, cargo, unfortunately. It it otherwise was a full cargo hold, so like it was packed to the uh, as much as it could with whatever it was carrying. Um, are you going to start at the? Uh, the bottom end down with the uh, the galley fin, or are you going to start up in the bridge? Um, I'll probably start up at the bridge, since that's where the more important people's quarters were and stuff. Okay. Um, the uh, helms are definitely magical. Both of the chairs radiate magic very strongly. We're sure of that. Uh, you do not detect anything else magical in this chamber. All right, I'll move on to the first officer's quarter there. Okay. Uh, you do not detect anything magical in there. Okay, and the next one. Okay. There is something magical in here. Seems to be oh. under the remains of the bed. Then I'll uh, start pulling the bed off the top of it, then. Okay. 
Um, it's more digging through the wrecked bed <laughs> and the uh, the du very very dusty uh, uh, disintegrating remains of uh, uh, whatever made up the mattress. Um, but uh, you do clear it, and the uh, whatever is detecting as magical appears to be below the floorboards. Then I'll shout for Braxton then to bring his crowbar. Okay. Braxton a break off from his searching. Um, what was this? The third room? Oh, that room. Yep. Then okay. I'll point out where it is and say there's something under the floorboards there that's magical. Okay. Uh, let's see if we can get some floorboards up without damaging it. Uh, can Braxton see how big the thing is with the spell? Uh, you... You're only being indicated from uh, uh, Finn that there's yeah, some okay. magic under there. Okay, so he's going to try and lever up whatever floorboard that, that Finn tells him to lever up. Okay. Uh, so you do pry up the uh, floorboards. Uh, it's fairly easy, uh, both from a mix of clearly these were intended to be able to be pried up, and mm -hmm. um, they're in bad shape anyway. Yeah. Um, and inside, you see three items that are in a pretty good shape. Um, a long staff of pale wood bound with black iron on the ends. Labor perks up. Uh, a pair of pale leather boots lined with white fur from some oh. unknown creature. This is the Helm's room, so... And a large, heavy book with vellum pages uh, and cloth-covered wooden covers, uh, bound with metal. Oh. Ooh, uh, nice. The staff and the boots are magic. And specifically, let me go ahead and copy and paste this into you, and then I will tell you what they are radiating. If the book's not magical, then... Well, I suppose... It's a spell tells book. You. Spellbooks aren't magical, I don't think. And, don't really do um, you are well, not able to get uh, a reading on the uh, staff, Finn. Okay. Uh, the boots radiate weather. Bra Braxton's going to say hmm. quietly to Finn, should we let Solas pick the book up? He gets upset when books fall apart. Oh, I suppose we can do that. Touch the if, book. <laughs> if if Finn says that uh, he didn't get the reading on the staff, Solas will cast uh, his detect magic. Uh, what uh, priest version? I have both, and uh, let's start with the priest. All right. Um, you get combat for the staff for uh, priest. And then you're going to cast uh, the wizard version? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you get uh, alteration and uh, enchantment charm. Yeah, uh, alteration and enchantment charm for wizard on the staff. Mm -hmm. And then on the boots, uh, alteration. Okay. And Solas will uh, carefully check the book and its condition. Uh, seems in good condition. It does not disintegrate when you uh, pick it up. Solas will uh, very carefully take it uh, from the secret compartment and uh, hold on to it. Okay. Um, you uh, so at this point Finn's uh, spell would expire, and uh, with your two detect magics uh, sweeping the rest of the ship, you will detect mm -hmm. nothing else uh, magical. Okay. So, other than these, a few magic items and the uh, coinage we found. The helm, a serious helm, seems to be the most valuable thing here. Yeah. Braxton says, "I'm, I'm going to search for a similar secret compartment in there, in there, the captain's yeah, then, quarters. Okay, it just uh, might not be magical and just be there. No, that's fine. That's fine. It's just I know Solace likes finding old books and stuff. There might be some 
there might be some mundane items uh hidden yeah. below the floor that have information about the voyage of the ship or something okay um doing so you do not find uh particularly loose floorboards under the bed and if you pry up the boards anyway you do not find yeah. a small compartment under there okay seems like the spell, got... the spell caster has made their own compartment yeah Brax is going yeah. to check out these other two rooms. Uh, or has you, anyone been in there? Yeah, the other ones have been searched and nothing of uh, value has been found. Yeah, yeah he's, the he's... Third, third one from the Helm's room was the crew quarters, and the fourth one was the, was the galleon. Was any of them catapult shot magical at all? Uh, no. So let's suggest that since we used few in our last ship combat, we might as well uh, restock a catapult shot from this. Oh yeah, yeah. we'll do. Okay. That makes sense. Who is gonna? Are you guys gonna unbolt the uh, the helms and take them out? Yeah, we'll do. Yeah. Okay. Who's gonna carry them out? I'll carry one. All right. How heavy are they? Uh, they're not yeah, super but... heavy. One person can carry it pretty easily, except maybe uh, not Solus. <laughs> Lever carry? What? Yep. what is all the strength again? Six. Six. Oh yeah. Yeah. I Brax mean, he could carry, carry it. It would just be very, very unwieldy for him. Extremely encumbered. Bra yeah. Brax was just looking for smuggling compartments in all the rooms, and seeing as it looks like we are not going to be able to salvage much wood, um, he's not too bothered about um, causing a bit of damage because we're not going to sell the ship. You do not find any uh, other uh, compartments in any of the other rooms. Okay. So, can he make a carpentry check to see whether it's worth salvaging any of the wood on this? Go ahead. Okay. Let's see if I get the exact same number from the carpentry check. He spoke now, as it's not going. Or he spoke now, and it is going to. Seven. Did I get seven last time? You did get a 7 on your last uh, d20 and uh, the previous d20, yes. Yeah, but... You get yeah. got 9 on the last carpentry check. Yeah. But he did yeah. still roll the same number that he rolled last two times. Uh, so, um, your evaluation is that you'd probably be able to salvage uh, in... Like, because you would... Like, there's wood that's dirty enough, but it's old. Yeah. You think that you could salvage at most out of this thing uh, somewhere between two and five uh, hull points worth. But yeah. it would take two full days of yeah. sitting here. So basically... Yeah, basically, and we don't want to spend that long. Basically, Well, we could tow it and, and it's strip food it. food versus wood. Yeah, we could tow it and strip it. But the problem is, is we, we'd have to be disassembling the bad wood and getting I, rid of the bad wood, wouldn't we? Yeah. So, like, we're going to have as much effort as if we were stripping a 20-ton ship and we, we only get a tenth of the wood out of it. It's, even, know, it, well, and it's even more effort than it would normally be if this were a, a, a brand new, intact 20-ton uh, yeah. ship because you wouldn't need to be doing much evaluation on that wood. Okay. Whereas you're basically, like, pulling off a board, evaluating yeah. it. Is it good? You put it in the pile. If not, you toss yeah. it. Yeah kind of thing mm -hmm. and it's yeah. every I don't think, single uh, board going to that effort is really worth it right no, you, would no, ha no. You, you would not be able to like do it while towing it either uh -huh. um because uh you would you would need to be sitting still and and having your ships alongside each other and stuff like that it, it... oh okay i thought we could have a, a crew of people on the ship disassembling it no because it... that would just be too dangerous it's in too bad oh, of a shape for that all oh, right, got gotcha. you. Okay, yeah, if this enough. was in perfect condition, then it, then okay. it could be doable. But yeah, yeah, if it was in great condition, yep. sure. But in the current condition, not really worth it. And I think yep. we are better off just continuing on. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. well Brax, Braxton's going to um, Braxton's going to demount the helms in. And uh, how much stuff will we? How much weapons will we getting off the? Uh, um, well, you you done down here? G gonna head up and take a quick look mm -hmm. at the uh, um, the weapon ammo and and then mm -hmm. get back onto your ship. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. I uh, think when we check the weapon ammo, maybe a cursory scan with the tech magic, see if they had any 
special magic ammo hitting it with normal stuff. Uh, already done. Uh, who would be the okay. last coming up the stairs? Last coming upstairs? Yeah. Braxton, I suppose. Okay. We're down. All right, so I'm going to move everyone over onto the upper deck. So Lars would have already gone to the upper deck if he had to ch scan the ammo with his detect magics. All right. Um, so, yeah, the ammo um, is... Uh, there's nine catapult shot that you can recover. Uh, yeah. None of it's magical. It's fine. Nine still, nine more shots that we don't have. And uh, Braxen, as you uh, come up your the the stairs, uh, give yeah. me a dexterity check. <laughs> okay, it's just a d20, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, dex is fifteen. Okay. Oh. Um. See, if it was a 7 again, it would have been good, but it wasn't yeah. a 7. Um, so everyone uh, walking over the, uh, um, the ladder back up onto the, uh, the main deck yeah. has uh, weakened some of the boards. And as you're uh, just getting up, uh, your foot smashes through uh, the, uh, like w one of the top steps. Um, yeah. And you start to pull yourself out when all of a sudden there is a loud keening scream from behind you and a ghostly form streaks at you. And that is where we're going to end the, uh, the session. <laughs> yeah, not, a, not a banshee, because that would be awful for us. Well, so, when we come back next time, we'll see what that thing is, and uh, it will be attacking Braxton. Good luck, Braxton. You're carrying a chair, aren't you? Uh, no, no, he was gonna. He would have gone back and get his carpentry tools before he tried to demount the helms. I don't oh, think that's still on. invisible. Huh. Uh, I think he would have been carrying the uh, helm up. You think I would have? Okay. Yeah, because this is this is essentially you're 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 done. You're you're getting the stuff off and and everything I like that. I think the two wizards might want to mark that that they got flying active on their characters by putting a symbol on there. For next yeah. session, you'll probably forget. And leva uh, invisibility for yourself. So You're invisible. Mm. If if Braxton hits this undead with a uh, with a helm, does it count as a magical weapon? <laughs> uh, technically, yeah, actually, it, it would. <laughs> oh my god! What? I'm just kidding. I right, mean, I mean it, it would it would be an in, in, uh, improvised uh, weapon, so it wouldn't do a whole lot of damage. But yeah, it would count as a magic weapon. Whether it counts as <laughs> magic enough is uh, the other question. <laughs> All right, so XP wise, let's see. That is going to be uh, 500 XP for Braxen, Ocker, Leva, and Solus. And Sorry, how much? 500. Okay. And for Finn and Laftel, 750. Oh, XP. At this rate. Ah, oh, nice. Even we'll, never get, to split. we'll never get down to the 90,000 plus that she needs to get down. Eh, it'll come eventually. Well, uh, thanks for the session. All I need to head out here. All right. Uh, thank you, yeah. uh, players, for playing. I really do appreciate it. And thanks, everyone out there, for watching. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that as well. I hope you had a, a great time. We will be back next week as uh, we find out uh, whether uh, Braxton is about to be cl completely clobbered by an insubstantial uh, spiritual entity. See ya. I know thanks. I'm looking forward to it. See you next thanks time, everyone. Thanks for the game. Thanks, thanks for, for the game. Take care, everyone.